Now for how to survey it is there's one more setup required and that is for the communication part. So if we go to setup <coughs> you will see GPS port is 5656 which is a virtual COM port. You will also see very importantly there's a salinity value there. Um, we use this value to calculate sound speed. So you need to make sure that if you are working in areas where it's not fresh water that you have the correct salinity value at the transducer phase especially for velocity measurements. Depth measurements where there's a salinity change or temperature gradient taking place you will need to make use of a, a CTD instrument similar to a castaway to measure those profiles and IPAC will use that to correct it and I will show you uh, some measurement files that IPAC converted for uh, sound speed calculations. The next step is are you using a Sontec ST24 uh, modem or a Pirani modem? And in this case we're going to use a Sontec um, radio um, and you're using this feature to scan the device and IPAC determines um, which device you are going to connect it in by using this feature. Uh, what I normally do is the quickest is just type in device, conf device manager and I will go on the ports and identify the specific COM port that's assigned to that radio or device and then select the COM port and when you've done that then you can scan for devices. IPAC will populate this window with the actual serial number uh, you can select that and then accept and then I, IPAC will be able to connect to the instrument. This, this step is very important to connect to other surveyor either using the ST24 modem or the Pirani modem. If you go to the Pirani modem, again using Pirani modem and in this case you just type in the serial number and select and accept that and IPAC will use that to connect to the instrument. If we select the Sontec Radio ST24 modem, there's an RTK option as well. So if you're using the Sontec um, RTK or GPS solution, this field was supplied to configure the base station itself. So for example, if you have, if you are setting up the RTK base station over a known benchmark with a known latitude and longitude, you can program that base station to those specific coordinates and elevation. This is very important because this will assist the base station to correct for any atmospheric influences on the GPS signal. Um, this will definitely improve your measurement accuracy. So if you are only going to perform a survey within a specific day then it's probably not required. If you are going to repeat the survey in the future or if the surveys can extend over multiple days, I would highly recommend that you use this feature. Uh, for users that's using uh, smart antennas, uh, using splitter cables, specially designed splitter cables for other surveyor, this feature is obviously not required because these settings you can do in the smart antenna itself. Uh, this will only be applicable to the GPS solution that Sontex supplies with the instruments. At this stage, which would be the A25, uh, A21 um, hemisphere antenna. So, if you've set up the, the communication settings, you accept, and then you will be able to connect to the instrument. With our surveyor, there's an, another step that needs to be followed, um, and I highly recommend that you do this before you go into the field, as to test the device. So, if you select test device, you should be able to see data streaming into IPAC. Obviously the instrument doesn't have to be in the water, but you will see that there's data coming in. And this is just a final check to make sure your communications with the instrument is correct. And that is the, the hardware configuration of it. Um, and important just to save your settings that you've made and you can close the window. At this point you are definitely ready to go out to the field and perform a survey. One thing that I've learned, especially in the beginning uh, with setting up surveys, is making sure that your geodesy and your maps that you've created is within the same reference frame. 
Uh, one way of verifying that is, and I, I found probably the, the most effective and, 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 and uh, least cost associated, is to do it at your office itself. Create a Google map uh, of your office uh, parking area, set up your survey, take your instrument out in a parking area, uh, start the survey. If you see the boat in your parking area, then you know your geodesy that you're using and the reference frameworks that you use between the, the geodesy as well as your uh, background maps and line plans are all the same. And then you know you can use the same approach for your field survey as well.